the software industry. It is, it is fledgling, uh, it is fragmented, but there are quite a number of uh, companies and uh, entrepreneurs, young people out there that are developing software for the use of the local uh, industry. And in point of fact, some of them have actually developed software for the international market, but it's very fragmented and not that well coordinated. What have you been doing to curb the fragmentation in the software industry and bring all the components together? Uh, first of all, trying to create standards in terms of software development so that we, uh, we have software that is useful in terms of quality and documentation and all of that, not only for the local market but also for the international market. The second thing that we're doing is we're trying to get, um, uh, we're, we're developing or establishing what we call incubation centers because what we realize is that there are a lot of software entrepreneurs that are out there but there's a difference between um, developing or creating new software and being able to commercialize it and take it to the market. So I think that we're doing, uh, we're trying to do, we're doing some things in those areas, establishing incubation centers that will not only help to foster innovation but will also help to take that innovation, working with the incubates, so to speak, uh, to commercialize their, um, their applications, whether through business services, marketing services, legal services, and of course business mentees that will help them take these things through from innovation all the way to um, development. What are some of the challenges facing Nigeria's software industry at the moment, and how are you dealing with those? I think the biggest challenge is that um, trying to get uh, local companies, companies not so much local, companies in Nigeria to buy Nigerian software. The major reason for that is that even though we're developing innovative creative software in terms of the quality, in terms of documentation, in terms of thoroughness or the testing of the software, we're still not there yet. So that's one big challenge that the industry needs to, um, needs to surmount. I think the other, um, uh, the other challenge, or there are several, but the other big challenge is funding. Um, software development does not survive through the traditional lending collateral-based lending. Most of these young people don't have the collateral by which they uh, to, to, to borrow money. And so we need venture capital funds to support them. It's a risk that you're taking, but clearly if the risk pays off, the returns are really quite significant. So we're trying to create an innovation fund that is venture capital-based to support the industry that cannot really survive on collateral-based and traditional, uh, traditional lending. The third thing we need to, um, the, the third challenge or the hurdle we need to cross is run intellectual property rights. We have spoken to young software developers. Their biggest fear is that when they do develop the software, people can, anybody can, can take it from them and basically just call it their own and begin to market and sell it. So we need to have very strong intellectual property uh, laws, particularly for software developers, to protect them. So when they develop that software, they can actually claim the credit and for the commercialization and the returns that come from that a successful commercialization. Presently, there's a software training program taking place in Nigeria for 500 youths to develop their skills in software programming and so on. What next for them after this? I think that's a great question. <laughs> what, what next? The, the big what next is that we are going to start a process by which we actually bring the industry together, oil and gas, banking, manufacturing, and we will challenge them and say, look, you're spending hundreds of millions of dollars buying software from outside Nigeria. Give us your requirements. What, it is, what is it that you actually want? I mean, yes, we may not be able to build the, um, the big ER enterprise resource planning applications overnight, but there are elements of um, integration packages, elements of um, ancillary or collateral software that is actually required, that is specific or unique to Nigeria. So working with those, with the industry and, and the buyers of this software and asking them to challenge the local industry to build this software, we can actually get people, if you tell us what your requirements are, we can get people to build this software, test it properly, document it properly, and sell it to you. And that, for me, that's really the beginning. We can't develop the software industry uh, if, the, if the, um, the local, the buyers of the software uh, are not satisfied with what they're getting today, or if you don't understand what their requirements are. So that's one big thing that we're doing. That would be the big what next in terms of creating jobs and begin to create an industry that can be successful. In terms of job creation, as you, as you mentioned, how much of an impact will it have on the employment figures? I think it will be tremendous. I think if we, and, and really when you look at it, that um, the, the, the biggest challenge for us in terms of job creation is really for the young, young people, it's 18 to, 18 to 30 if I, if I can call it that. That's probably when unemployment is, uh, is the highest. And of course, that's where we need to create jobs because these are people at the peak of their you know, career and their um, and, and enterprise. So in terms of what impact it can create, I would say it, there's, a, there's a tremendous amount of impact it can create. And really I can just model it or just uh, use countries like India to exemplify that India, the Indian software industry is several billion dollars in terms of revenue. It employs I think about over a million people 
and the collateral employment is over three times more than that. And I see Nigeria having a very large local market. I see Nigeria having uh, a very uh, a market that is hungry for technology, as we've seen with the with the telecoms industry. And so I I am quite confident that we can create you know several hundreds of thousands of jobs in the software industry alone over the next I would say three to five years.